long as I've been listening to these meetings since the very first one, I remember Mayor Billy talking about, we know it's a really long way, but we may have to open chain of craters because we think it will go to the ocean. I see earth moving equipment in Ahalanui. I see earth moving equipment in Keao. I see earth moving equipment building a park in Pahoa, which may burn up. And I want to know why every piece of earth moving equipment in on the island is not making a road to connect us to a chain of craters. Thank you. As far as the equipment and the opening of chain of craters, we are coordinating that. We have Mr. Lee here from our Department of Public Works who's been working on the other roads, as well as we've been in very close contact and working the scenarios out for chain of craters as well as railroad with our state highways. So all of those things are in progress. Uh, obviously resources being focused at the high priority areas first and then looking at the other solutions if the scenarios play out. So we are definitely moving on all of those items. There will re be re a required partnership obviously with chain operators because it is partially state, partially federal land. And we're in the process of trying to get the support from the Department of Interior with allowing the reestablishment of chain operators to move forward. So we'll be able to keep you more informed as things go on with the progress of those projects. The flow is eminent. For sure, it looks like 80% like it's coming down, crossing the highway, blocking us in to Pahoa. Thousands of people are gonna be either blocked in this side or that side. That's right, possibly, right, that's right. Possibly we're gonna be evacuated to the other side. That means we're gonna leave our homes. We're talking like in two weeks. We're going to leave our homes and businesses and go on the other side. Or we're going to decide to stay and we're not going to be able to go there so we don't have any food, we don't have any, maybe maybe the electric will be cut down. And we're talking like not in six months or a year, we're talking in two weeks. You know, two weeks. You know, it costs two weeks for about it. You know, in two weeks. So isn't there something that we should really, really get everybody to move and to do, like, to do things to help them? A lot of people are tapped out financially because of the storm. Yeah. So a lot of people are like, I don't have money. That's right. You know, what am I supposed to do? I don't have money, or my home is already messed up, or, you know, but we're talking like not like 50 people or 100 people are gonna be displaced. We're talking thousands of people. So what are we going to do? I mean, shouldn't we be doing something more than, I mean, these meetings are amazingly good, but shouldn't we actually be doing something real? Because, yeah. this isn't like something funny. This isn't like something like, um, you know, something that's like later, Bombay, you know. This is like traveling quarter mile a day Every four days, it travels one mile. Four miles away, that's pretty easy, 16 days. 16 days, that's like two weeks and two days. That's like, I mean, for real. We gotta, you know, like, we're not really, really, it's not really entering. This is one time where we all gonna help each other. You know, I know you see only Warren and Darrow here, but like I said at the last meeting, every day we get everybody working. Round the clock, the emergency operations center, we have every option mapped out. How much can cost? How many guys? What is the distance? You know, as you can see, the map can go anywhere. You know, we cannot like cut here and a lava turn here. We gotta be prepared for every eventuality. Our emergency declaration, thankfully, and I'd like to say aloha to Governor Abercrombie and the State Department, because his quick, emergency declaration that follows opens up a lot of opportunities for us to move really quickly. Because when we build roads and we build infrastructure, it's a very prolonged, detailed, involved permitting process, multiple agencies, multiple levels of government. What the emergency declaration does is allows us to just go in and cut through and build. And today I sent one letter to Director Isla DLNR and Director Ford Fuchigami of Department of Transportation, just per the emergency declaration that we signed, asking them their cooperation for push railroad through through state lands and to expedite and fast track permitting. If it's gonna take two weeks, we gotta go 24 hours. Folks, we're going 24 hours. 
the scenario is our goal. We're not going to leave our children and our family strapped, disconnected, and cut off. We're going to do everything we can. We have an amazing group of people working really hard. I'm here to assure you guys that. We talked um, a lot about the circulation plan, and I just want to say I can relate to the anxieties that people are feeling um, as a fellow merchant. It's like a disaster in slow motion, as I've been describing, and um, it helps to get first-hand information to ease the anxiety. The reality is we're clinging to an active volcano, um, but just getting a sense of the plan. And you've mentioned railroad between Maku'u, I guess, and um, Hawaiian beaches, so Kahakai Boulevard. But in previous meetings, you've mentioned going down toward Opihikau. And if possible, I would just like to hear the plan, like the, if it's phases or if it's going to be all simultaneously, if we're going all the way to Opihikau, or say my mother-in-law in Kapoho vacation land, will she be driving up and then going down Kahakai or trying to get through Wawa? Um, we don't have to talk about her specifically, but just to understand the difference in the lifestyle that people are going to have when they're taking the dirt road to Hilo to get their pizza dough to try to maintain a pizza parlor in this isolated community that we're going to have. So, thank sure. you. Well, in addition to Railroad Avenue and Beach Road, Warren and his team has been looking at multiple other ways to create connectivity to shorten the routes if people are cut off or isolated. That includes connecting roads between Nanavali and the highway, Nanavali and Hawaiian Shores, Leilani and Opiikau. So trying to identify as many connector routes that can be made to shorten the access routes or shorten the transportation corridors to make it as convenient as possible. I, I'm just wondering if we could get, because um, I know, I understand and can respect the mayor saying we're going to work 24-7 if we have to. Are we working 24-7 if we have to in this corridor between Maku'u and Kahakai and then visiting the other sections later? Or what is the, the timeline? And I'm not trying to press information that isn't there. I'm just hoping to ease people's anxieties by getting this kind of information. The two major routes, as I mentioned last time, that we're going to focus on is the north-south because Highway 130 is a north-south uh, primary corridor. That's a spine for Puna. So the other parallel routes are Railroad Avenue between HPP and Hawaiian Beaches, Hawaiian Shores, and the other is the Government Beach Road. So the Government Beach Road is the responsibility is the county. We take care of that. The <coughs> Railroad Avenue, we're working with the state to expedite work on that and talking to a gentleman over here, they're willing to do the work. Well, I would say free, but I don't know if it's free, but, but they're willing to do the work and start as soon as possible. So definitely we have talked to the state of Hawaii. Interesting, the state, the land between the two subdivisions, Paradise Park and Hawaiian Beach, Hawaiian Shores, is owned by the state. Department of Land and Natural Resources under their jurisdiction, but they need to work with the Department of Transportation to get that road in. And we'll be working with them through the civil defense medium to get it done. So we expect to see tractors on the ground very shortly on both sides, uh, Government Beach Road and also Railroad Avenue. And just to follow up to this, is so the M Government Beach Road would be the the collector, I guess, or take the people through Wawa to get to Hawaiian Shores in order to get on railroad or if they wanted to continue on the one lane through Government Beach Road? Like say say somebody in Popoho Vacation Land, Pohoiki area, they would drive down Government Beach Road north and then they would go to Hawaiian Shores if they opted not to be on the beach road any longer? I'm, I'm just that, that is correct. Okay. That is okay. correct. And then there's the other side of railroad that we're looking at also from Hawaiian shores all the way back down to Kopaho, which is uh, under different ownerships. Some of it is under the state of Hawaii, under the Division of Forestry. Some of it is under Bishop Estate. And then there's a whole bunch of private land owners along that route, what I would call the southern portion of Railroad Avenue that goes, that terminates in the Kapoho area.
And, and so what I'm gathering is that that's a second phase then because of the different landowners or would that also be part of this, we're working 24 seven to get that open as well? Well, again, the focus would be the areas between Hawaiian Paradise Park and Hawaiian Beaches, Hawaiian Shores, okay. Railroad Avenue, and Old Government. I got you now. Thank you very we much. We had more than one question. Again. <laughs> the follow-ups to the follow-ups. Molly, out on the bottom. We only have one road in, one road out. Yeah. And so if we could connect Cahal Street to Railroad and another, so we can get out the bottom, it would be great. That's the uh, exit route for Nanavali, yeah? So that's your question. Yeah. Uh -huh. So one of the things that we're looking at, in fact, we already talked to some people about this, that exit route from Nanavali, we've got uh, two options. One is to go down that uh, farm road, the Papaya Farm, Hit Railroad, no. uh, that's Bishop Estate. I spoke, yeah, in fact, chaos. I spoke with them this morning. The other one is to uh, take Nanavali from the other end of Mauna Kea and head uh, towards uh, Kahakai, yeah, to the Hawaiian shores. So again, I got a call into Hawaiian shores telling them what we want to do. I uh, hope to get a call, make contact with them tomorrow. So there's two possible alternative routes uh, out of Nana Valley. One is at the north end of Mauna, Mauna Kea, and the other one is the uh, south end of Mauna Kea. One is to tie into railroad, the other one to tie into Kahakai. So a lot of it depends on that area when we focus, where is the flow crossing 130? That's going to be the, the okay. critical decision point. If, if Monica was pushed through, that would put you right back up on Highway 130 instead of going lower where railroad is. Right. And that's if you're going the wrong direction on Monica, right. exactly. going towards the flow. Right. There's also another option. I just want to get into too much details because actually Bishop Estate, uh, through the Lisi, they had pushed. Uh, all the way up to Nana Valley. Uh, and there is something that goes all the way, almost touching the last lot at Pakalana. She used to cool the lava down. And not an overnight team. Uh, and using all these roads back in the old days when shipment boats were running Hawaiian beaches and all these areas, um, they gave the county opportunity to make the beach road. Um, but then it didn't go through. So did railroad. Railroad was used by the government also. Um, I would, it would be much easier to use railroad than the beach road because the beach road is too many obstacles to go through. Okay. And railroad, yeah, it's just one. And they really made the one department ever railroad. They can join them. And you know, we do really need a lot of emergencies around here. And I thank you folks for your services because you guys work hard. Yeah.